Hello, it is Friday, October 7th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Friday puzzle today, of course, which means it is our first of two themeless puzzles for the week, and might be fairly tricky, which is something to, I don't know, fear perhaps, because I thought yesterday's was pretty tricky, so we'll have to see how today's goes. This themeless edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Lewis Williams, Ryan Eaves, and, as always, the inestimable hood monster, the invaluable Timothy Mark, and the indomitable Shoalmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for directly supporting this channel and making this series a sustainable part of my daily work. I do very much appreciate that, as I appreciate the contributions of all of the uh, patrons at any level. Thank you so much for your contributions. Of course, if you become a benefactor, you can get the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug. And if you become um, a patron of any sort, you can get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the site to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week, including this month, the October monthly bonus puzzle from the New York Times, which I um, solved and recorded, solved and published yesterday. It was themed around National Newspaper Carrier Day. <laughs> um, I think probably most of us were, were not deeply familiar with, but, um, but anyway, it was a nice fun, uh, as the, as the monthly puzzles tend to be a pretty smooth solve, highly, but shallowly themed. Anyway, that's on the Patreon channel if you're interested in that. And, um, do subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you've been enjoying these videos, why not tell a friend as well? Consider that. And now let's get on to the puzzle. Let's solve this. So this was, uh, this is of course a Friday themeless puzzle. It was constructed by Mary Lou Guizzo and Jeff Chen. Mary Lou Guizzo has constructed a few dozen puzzles for the New York Times and Jeff Chen, of course, well over a hundred, an extremely, extremely experienced constructor and the proprietor of xwordinfo.com. And it was edited as always by Will Shorts. So let's start solving. How fast does a blank have to run before it looks gray? Horse? I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, sharp divide is what a ravine or a. That's not really sharp. A sharp divide. That sounds more like a d division between people, but I'm not sure. They come with strings attached. And a sycophant. A sycophant is someone who, you know, a supplicant or someone who sucks up to you or a or a. Oh, Ah, that's annoying. I can't think of other syllables right at the moment. Words from a witness. I swear or something like that or testimony or evidence or um, could it be? Is there any way it could be? I swear it does say words. So it would need to be either something that a word that could be used to describe several words or it, it's, this itself will be more than one word. So what about this? Former name of the second largest country in Africa. Zaire? Is that? I hope I'm right about that. How fast? Oh, does a zebra have to run before it looks gray? I see. Right. Very good. Um, <laughs> when would those stripes sort of average out to a blurred gray? Okay. So I swear I might be correct. English Derby site. Oh, Epsom. Um, I guess it would be English Derby site if we're, if we're pronouncing it in the British manner. And they come with strings attached. Um, so sorry, this would be, uh, racing. Um, they come with strings attached. Um, don't know. I mean, this ending with S would be surprising because of this R. One has to make a run for it. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe this is pluralized in a different, different manner. So let's look at this. To withstand something is to not bow to it. That's sort of the opposite. Although you could say that, re, you know, there's the, sort of a proverb, his actual proverb or his framing I can't bring to mind, but it's something about the the reeds bend to the wind and the oak tree doesn't. And so in fact, the oak tree can be blown over. Um, to go around is to roam maybe? And one in a gallery. This doesn't really seem great, what I'm putting into the puzzle around here. Nickname in Star Wars. I don't think these are right. These just don't feel like I'm getting anything useful. Blank City, nickname for Seattle. Emerald City. There we go. So what about this? To withstand, uh, to brave something. Okay, I, I needed to get rid of 
my words from of a witness. That's funny. It did, <laughs> strangely enough, it did actually help me along, but but uh, most of it was incorrect. So one in a gallery, a rogue, a rogue's gallery, go around as to rove, very similar to Rome. Um, oh, and Annie for Anakin Skywalker, nickname in Star Wars. And aprons come with strings attached. You can tie behind, you know, behind your back. And one in a, oh, not a gallery, I'm sorry, a galley, a rower, someone on a ship. There we go. I was completely wrong about that. So words from a witness, I saw it, I see. I saw it all happen. And now I'm providing my testimony, I swear. One has to make a run for it. Um, so this could be something, you know, in the sense of a grocery run, if the answer were groceries, which it, it, which it isn't, obviously. But I just mean, it could be that, or it could mean running for office or something, or it could mean running for some kind of competition. Um, but I don't see what that is. Connector of two names, a.k.a. perhaps, also known as, and Steve with four NBA coaching championships. Well, implausibly, I think I might know this answer. Steve Kerr or Kerr? I'm not, I'm not even sure. I don't even know that I've heard his name pronounced, but uh, it's a name I've seen. It's a name I've seen, a scene that I'm fairly certain this is the name of a basketball coach. So that might be the answer. Let's look here. First chairman of the EEOC, familiarly. Oof, I'm not sure. What about this? Dry wine of Spain. Dry wine of Spain. Another area that is certainly no specialty of mine is wine knowledge. I mean, the Rioja, for, but that, that doesn't seem like it would be specifically dry. Um, one in a... Oh, didn't we already have one in a galley? We did. One in a galley and then another one in a galley. So possibly another nautical thing. We'll have to see. Okay, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? Um, oh, with 38 and 43 across, history-making SCOTUS appointees. So that would be the Supreme Court of the United States. So this is a, a U.S. A bit of U.S. political context. Um In three, I wonder if this is Katenji. I thought it was Katenji. I thought her name was, is it Katanji Brown Jackson? Does that fit? Relatively recently appointed um, uh, um, Supreme Court Justice, who's the first uh, black woman to be appointed. Is this, oh, maybe this is Rioja. Oh, okay. Maybe this is actually working. Although this doesn't look great. Hmm, maybe this is wrong, <laughs> which wouldn't be a big surprise. Although, th this must be correct. But I don't quite understand how the crosses work. Oh, this is a junior. It'll be FDR junior. Aha, okay. There we go. Franklin Del Delano Roosevelt junior. Um, there, that's the answer. So this was care with an E or cur. <laughs> One has to make a run for it. Oh, a stolen base in baseball. Okay, you need you need to to run to steal the base. Okay, I think this is this is correct. I mean, I think this would be tough if you if you didn't have a U.S. cultural context and you didn't know this name because it it's three of it's three answers and you don't get any additional help from from each one of them. Um, what I mean is 38 and 43 across are only clued by, by connection to 33 across. So you don't get more there. Okay. Scrap is waste maybe. And Mauna Kea. It's, a, um, it's in Hawaii, I think. And lead into a Southern Ville. Ash, Asheville is the name of a name of a town or city. Um, so I suspect that's the answer. Spot for a spot. A tea shop, maybe? A spot of tea? Could be the answer. Like some unpl oh, like some unpleasant air and like some unpleasant air. Nice. So they've got a few of those with the galley uh, members and then whatever they were. And then like some unpleasant air is... I don't know. I don't know. What about this? Comfort food with shortening? Question mark. 
So you'd think shortening would mean, you know, butter or some other some other form of shortening if you're making baked goods. But the question mark makes me think it won't be. So maybe it's something, something cheese, mac and cheese, right? So the shortening is that we are literally abbreviating the words macaroni and and. So macaroni and cheese becomes mac and cheese. And so in that manner, we've shortened the comfort food. Very clever. That's very good. Yikes. Um, that's how I feel because I don't know the answer to this. Blank makani, buttery dish. Well, dal makani is a, is, is a dish. So um, it's a very, very good dal dish. So lentil, lentil dish. Um, so that would be the answer there, I suspect. And foe of the Roman Empire. Um, I don't know. I hope I see this with just a couple more crosses, but we'll have to we'll have to find out. With calmness and self-control. Something Lee, presumably. You did it. It's a, it, this is looks like an adverb, so you did it in this manner. You did it something Lee, but fully commits. Goes all in. There we go. I think that's right with that ly. That was a helpful little thing to put into the grid. Some bridge maneuvers. Um, so this could be this could be um, obviously bridges that cross a river or something like that. But I suspect it's bridge the card game, which I did some <laughs> did learn to play several years ago, um, taught taught by some friends. But I honestly have to be <laughs> I have to be honest. I don't remember well enough. I haven't played since then, and I don't remember it well enough to know what this could be. But they could, they, they, I mean, it's probably plays. I mean, you know, you play cards in some manner, but I don't i don't remember any of the terminology. Foe of the Roman Empire, calmness and self-control, blank coming, 1969, Three Dog Night hit. Three Dog Night, I think, is best known for their cover of the Harry Nilsson song, One, One is the Loneliest Number. And that's what I mainly know them for, which became the more famous version of the song. Um, but I don't know what this is, I don't think. It is coming? I mean, is base 10, question mark. Your toes, because they're at the base of your body. So base 10 would ordinarily indicate the decimal system that we use. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I mean, that's, that's a base 10 system because there are 10, you know, 10, 10 counts per... Uh, I don't know any of the vocabulary for this, but for a sort of tier, you know, in the sense that the the the, the second digit is delineates uh, iterates number counts of ten. Anyway, boy, this is a useless description. In any case, that's not what it means here because of the question mark, which indicates punnery or wordplay. So I think it's probably toes on the base of your body, and then this looks like Attila the Hun. There we go. Okay, and then. With calmly, calmness and self-control, you did something coolly. You did it with calmness and self-control. Nice to get all those C's as well. Calmness, control, cool, coolness. Car modified into the monkey mobile. So I guess this would have been what the monkeys, that that band, um, the sort of Beatles slight takeoff band. I mean, they weren't a parody band of the Beatles, but they were very clearly inspired by the Beatles and then did a lot of sort of comedy things as well. Um, but also were a regular band. Anyway, GTO, probably. I haven't, I haven't a clue, <laughs> except for what the crosses tell me, which is that this would be a Pontiac GTO, probably. Yikes would be OMG. And blank, oh, Eli's coming, maybe. So animal that the Aztecs called Iotoctli, uh, or turtle rabbit. So an armadillo? An Iotoctli, an armadillo. Turtle rabbit sounds sounds like a pretty good way to describe an armadillo, I think. So that, that seems plausible. Lozenge target, maybe. A rasp. You have a raspy voice because of an irritated throat, maybe. So you take a, a lozenge. Okay. Pastel, as it'd be called here in the UK, I think. Some bridge maneuvers um, are... Okay, we already know that that's something plays, but I don't know any more than that. Zig or zag is to veer. Oops, oops, oops. Okay, so sharp divide, oh, cleavage, right? Something was, uh, you know, you could cleave something in two, uh, metaphorically, between two people could 
could have cleavage between them and uh, create a sharp divide. One in a galley. A, I was going to say a sort of a, a coxswain or something, but I don't really think we use that terminology in the same context as people in a galley. It doesn't fit anyway. What's thrown for a loop? A lasso. Uh, you literally throw a loop of rope to, um, you know, catch an animal or a person, I guess. Okay. Oh, and th that was yet another question mark pun indicator there. So um, there have been quite a few of those in these in this, in this puzzle today, which is relatively common for the themeless puzzles, the Friday and Saturday puzzles. In the absence of a theme, they often um, are more populated with that kind of wordplay and punnery. Medical specialist could be an ENT, an ear, nose, and throat doctor. And a dating app, dating app info is age, maybe. I mean, this says info, which means the app and info, each of those is an abbreviated word. So that could mean the answer is also abbreviated. But the thing is, app and info are also sort of standardized words in their own right now. So it also might not signify an abbreviation. And you just have to sort of figure out the answer and determine that for yourself. The reason I say that is because age would be an example of an unabbreviated word. But I wouldn't be surprised if there are abbreviations of some kind of personal information that would also be appropriate. And the clue doesn't necessarily tell us which we're looking for. But I'm going to try age. Sycophant is... I don't know. What about this? Like some colleagues, esteemed colleagues. Okay, so that does look like age. And then one, oh, crew, a crew, member of the crew. Is that right? So then what about this? Takes care of for the family. Oh, offs. So I think the family in this case is referring to the mafia. So uh, crime family. And if you t take care of someone, so to speak, in that context, you, you kill them, you off, off them. So, oh, a chef in a cafe, right. So this is this is chef being used um, in galley in the sense of the the kitchen, galley, the kitchen. So there we go. Um, two different two different uses of galley, and that that that's I should have expected that to be honest. So a sick of it. It was a hanger on. There we go, a hanger on. Wish I would have thought of that earlier, but I did not. So the dating app info was age, and some bridge movies are end plays. Okay. I, I honestly don't even remember that, so I'm going to have to take it take it on faith that that's correct. But the crosses look solid, so I think it is. Coffee growing region on the Big Island. So here's another um, Hawaii-related clue, the Big Island of Hawaii. And Kona, I mean, Kona is coffee that's associated with Hawaii, so it's probably Kona something. Don't think I remember or, you know, either don't know or don't remember. I'm not sure which, <laughs> what the, the full name of this, this region is. So we'll have to come back to it. Helicopter in slang. I don't know. Maybe I'll know it when I see it. Jerkwad is a twit, maybe? Sale incentive informally. I don't know. Fluffy fur, fur source. Maybe this isn't Kona, because this makes me think alpaca, a fluffy fur source. What about this one? Stop sign. Stop sign. I'm not sure. Uh, lexic uh, lexicographic bit in brief. Lexicographic bit in brief. So I don't know, a syllable or a bit of orthography or something? Um, sorry, let me just check my phone. No. Okay, um, jerkwad, sale incentive informally, tangled mess maybe, morass, oops, it's not really tangled, I mean, it's a different metaphor, tangled, tangled you think of sort of string or rope or something all tangled up, whereas a morass is more, you could sort of use both of them in a similar kind of situation, but the metaphor is so different that it makes me think that won't be the answer. Okay, chill is to veg maybe, to chill out, but it could be chill as into ice something, literally. Don't know. So this doesn't look like Kona. Um, uh, let's keep going. Bag full purchased at a nursery's seeds or Sod, <laughs> neither of those fits for different reasons. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Seed can be like sort of a collectively plural noun. Let's let's look down. Just uh, 
just could mean only or it could mean fair. Uh, I don't really think there's any way to know without crosses. Sports event with many touching moments, epe, so uh, fencing, you use the, the epe and then, you know, touching, and a, a touch is a is scored in that sport. Uh, yet another thing, <laughs> another case in which I don't really have all the vocabulary for this because I'm not particularly familiar with it, but I do know that touches are are important. Okay, chemical blank, chemical chemical peel. We can get a chemical peel. And French woman uh, it could be femme. And as opposed to homme for a man. And lexicographic bit in... Oh, a definition of a word. Okay, so yeah, um, lexicography. So, you know, words. And then stop sign is... And maybe this isn't alpaca. I don't know. We'll come back to it. Uh, let's look at this corner yet because we've not done so. Big player, like some unpleasant air. Oh, right. Disgraces could be shames, maybe. You could disgrace yourself, I suppose. Shame yourself. Vicky Cars, it must be blank. I mean, it looks like it must be her, but I don't actually think I know this answer. But let's just try it and see. Now, this looks weird. At 18, the youngest person to sweep the four main four main Grammy categories, song, album, record, best new artist in a single year. I don't know. This could be him as well. Oh, maybe, right, that eye makes me wonder, is it Billie Eilish? One of those people who has become so dominant, and yet I honestly don't know that I know any of, any of their music. Uh, not in intentionally, I just don't think I've heard any of it. Um, although, no, they did a... A Bond song, maybe? Ah, I can't remember. Anyway, I don't know if this name is spelled with an I or an E. Like some unpleasant air, stale air, you could say. And humid could be unpleasant air. Unpleasant air could be humid. Okay, so that's an I. Eilish, there we go. Falstaffian, in a way. And big player. Big player. Oh, a, a tuba, a tuba. So this is Falstaff, the Shakespeare character. So obese is pretty much written in there. And then priestess of uh, Hecate Medea from Greek myth. And then title bestowed by a sultan is Pasha. Pasha came up in the plus word just the other day. And I needed a couple of crosses to get that one. Plus word is one of the um, puzzles I solve in, the, in YouTube shorts each day. Okay, so this, this whole area looks complete to me. Second half of a double header. Some a game, a double header is two games, right? So what? Something. Companion of a one across, maybe. A zebra. Companion of a zebra, maybe. Um I'm not sure what that is getting at. Some batteries for short. AAs, double A batteries, maybe? Entry requirement, often. A full name, maybe, to enter a competition or something? Does that work? Oh, a companion of a zebra is a GNU, maybe? And crumbly, another similar kind of animal. Crumbly topping. Oh, strusel? The dessert, just soul, the sort of just that person. No, that doesn't really work. Um, this doesn't look right. Crumbly topping. Um, show rainfall. Uh, hmm, I'm sort of running out of steam, aren't I? Oh, I haven't looked at this. Tiny rod-shaped organism. This is definitely something I'm going to know and be annoyed at myself if I can't bring it to mind. Tiny rod-shaped organism. It's like a... I don't know, I should delete this as well. Because I think it's going to have C, C's in it. Tiny rod-shaped organism. Like bacillus or something like that. I, I don't know if that's actually the answer. That might not even fit. No, I don't know. It does fit actually. Well, let's just look at that. Maybe that's actually the answer. 
entry requirements, maybe a username entry to a website rather than a you know formal competition or something. Username, second half of a double header, last game. You wouldn't really have a last of two things. You'd have the the latter or the second of two. Um, so maybe not that. Bag full purchased at a nursery. Oh, loam maybe. Uh, you know the fertile soil. Um, just Omir. Okay, that's better than Soul, which is what I was thinking before. So, well, I was only thinking it because of that incorrect L here. But in any case, you could say that's just the case. That's that 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 mirror example. Just just that one. Um, second half of a double header late came, I guess. Oh, because it would be late by the time by the time it happens, I guess. Or maybe, maybe that's a more specific sports term. This does look like Strusel. Why did I think it wasn't? Oh, it was because of the full name thing. Helicopter in slang. Some kind of something eater? Oh, yeah, so chill could be ice. Um, oh, maybe this is Kona. The Kona Coast. That sounds familiar now that I see it. Coffee growing region on the big island. Kona Coast. I think that's right. Sale incentive informally. A bonus? A bo bone? Is that the term for bonus? I have no idea. Um, fluffy fur source. Oh, it's not. It's not alpaca still. An angora rabbit. Th those produce fluffy fur. Um, stop sign. A oh, red. Stop the sign to stop at a you know stoplight. Okay, tangled mess maybe. Oh, cables, right. So we're not looking for a metaphor. We're looking for a literal tangled mess of cables in this case. Oh, helicopter and something, an egg beater. I guess because the way the rotors rotate are sort of reminiscent of an egg beater, I guess. Oh, sail incentive informally. I was thinking of a, I don't know why I was thinking of it this way. I would think of an incentive to a salesperson, but that's not what this is. This is uh, an incentive to encourage a buyer. So B-O-G-O, -O, BOGO, buy one, get one free, buy one, get one, I guess more accurately. And then a jerkwad is a tool, right? Person's a real tool. So there we go. That's funny. I mean, this took about as long as yesterday's puzzle took me, but it didn't feel as difficult to me, I guess, because I was, the thing that was tough about this puzzle was just the general resistance sprinkled throughout a, um, a themeless puzzle, whereas in yesterday I was very sort of self-consciously baffled by the theme So uh, for, for a while anyway. So yeah, um, I suppose that probably means this is relatively uh, well-tuned in terms of difficulty. And there were, some, there were some tricky things in here. I mean, this, this sort of tripartite clue can definitely be a challenge because if you don't know it, that's just, that's three answers you don't know. Um, but I suppose it also, if you then do get it, you know, if you can, if you can, even if you didn't note know it originally, but you, you get it from some crosses, then you've suddenly, you're suddenly able to fill out three answers. So I suppose it's, it sort of cuts both ways. Um, FDR Jr. That was, that's a tough cross actually with this, uh, I mean, two, two names from a very, you know, a, a specifically American cultural context that is, that is maybe a bit of a tough cross. Yeah, I would say so. And then Rioja, I mean, yeah, I didn't know that that referred to a dry wine. I'll have to look that up. And then Care, another name. I mean, yeah, th this this area, I mean, I, I was fortunate because I was able to write in uh, Katanji Brown Jackson quickly, but but this is a, this is, there is some tough, this is a tough overall area over here with all these names. I mean, name, names and proper nouns are always more difficult because, well, they have the potential to be because you just know them or you don't for the most part. Anyway, there we go. That was the Friday puzzle. Hope you enjoyed it. And let's discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle, that tricky Thursday themed puzzle. Let's see what we have. So uh, Thor Christensen observes that the only other square, oops, the only other square national flag as alongside, uh, in addition to the, to the, uh, the Swiss, Swiss flag is the flag of Vatican City. And then Thor points out, although there's also Nepal with its extremely unusual two triangle shaped flag. Yes, that is, that is a fascinating uh, national flag. Andrew Postnikoff explains civets, the what's often called a civic 
cat. I'm just clued yesterday with cat in quotation marks. Civets are uh, feliforms, but not felids. So on the branch of the carnivores, more closely related to cats than to dogs. And then regarding DDT as an anti-malarial, which I stumbled on slightly, explains DDT is a failed anti-malarial because it was an insecticide, which is what I, I knew it as, used to kill off large numbers of mosquitoes, the source of the spread of malaria. There were programs to try and use it to eliminate malaria, but for many reasons, these programs were stopped, but not before much ecological damage had occurred. Um, so that's very interesting. I, for whatever reason, don't think I had had that connection of DDT specifically to efforts to combat malaria. That is very interesting. And Jim A. corrects a bit of pronunciation on my part. So I had pronounced the actor Sal, I'd, I'd pronounced his surname as Mineo, which I, th Mineo, which I think would be closer to the original Italian pronunciation. But um, as Jim points out, it's in fact pronounced Minio. And that is apparently how um, Sal Minio and his family pronounced their name. So they just, they went with a sort of uh, Americanized pronunciation rather than something hewing closer to the to the original Italian. And that I didn't know. So thank you for that. And that's that for today's uh, video, today's crossword. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you'll be back tomorrow for the Saturday puzzle, another themeless, um, possibly even more difficult puzzle. We'll have to see. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Friday. Take care. Mm -hmm.